Hey there, kids. Welcome to the second episode in our Mission Road Kids video series, series just for you kids. And uh, I'm going to ask you a question to begin here. What do you think the world will be like in the future? Hmm. Now, while you're thinking about that, I'm going to think about what I can change myself into. Last week, I changed myself into a bunny with the rabbit ears and the rabbit snout, if you remember, because we went to the bunny kingdom. But this week, you know, since I asked you uh, what you think the world will be like in the future, I am going to change myself into a robot. How's that? All right, so let's think together. Let's say in about 40 years, when you all are adults, what do you think life will be like? Do you think things will be really different? What might still be the same? Now, when I was a kid, like a long time ago, we like to imagine what life would be like in the future. If you would have asked me when I was, say, six years old, like Quinn is now, you know, what do you think will be different in the year 2020? I would have said, 2020? That's so far from now. I'm going to be so old. Well, now it's 2020, and yes, I am getting old. I might have said something like, well, I really hope that we'll have flying cars, or maybe flying school buses. Maybe we'd have robot helpers to help clean the house and pack our lunches. Ever since I was young, I've been really interested in space, so I probably would have wished that we could live on other planets. There's my house, like on one of the moons of Saturn, my space garage, and my space car. But the future technology I really want, even now, is teleportation. If you've ever heard of the TV and movie series called Star Trek, they have things called transporters that I thought were so cool. You stand on this platform and say, Energize! And these lights light up around your body, your body disappears. And then you reappear instantly in another spot. We wouldn't have to drive long distances to take vacations or fly in a plane for hours to see family that live far away. Our family has relatives who live far away, like in Australia. Even in a plane, you're flying so fast, but it takes around 14 hours to get from LA to Australia. That's a long time. Imagine if we could just step on a platform and get teleported in less than a second to Australia or Hawaii or Europe or Africa or China or anywhere in the world. That's what I wish we had now. Now, did you know that there's a story in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples teleport like this? It comes in the book of John in the New Testament where we learn stories about Jesus. Now, Jesus has been teaching a huge crowd of people as his story begins. The Bible says there were 5,000 people, but there were a lot more than that. That's only counting the men. You see, back then, when they counted a big group of people like this, they didn't count women or kids. That's kind of unfair, right? Yeah, I'm glad things today are different. Now we count women and kids, too. So we don't even know how many people were there. There were probably a lot more, even than 5,000. That's a lot of people. And Jesus looked out at this huge crowd and he told his disciples, Hey, go get food for these people. The disciples were like, What? How are we going to find food for all of these people? They didn't know what to do. All they had were five loaves and two fish. One boy in the crowd had packed a lunch and he shared it. But what are five loaves and two fish compared to all of these people? But then Jesus did a miracle. From those five bread loaves and two fish, he multiplied the food, and he made so much food that everyone in the crowd got to eat. It says they even picked up 12 basketfuls of leftovers afterwards. Jesus made so much. Now, instead of sticking around after this miracle, Jesus went up on a mountain by himself, and the people all went home. Now, when evening came, the disciples got into a boat to cross the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was still on the mountain. He didn't get into the boat with them. As the disciples were rowing, the sea became rough and the weather got stormy. Winds started blowing really hard and the disciples were struggling to row the boat. 
It was late in the night, and they had only been able to row about three or four miles. The wind was blowing so hard, and the waves were so big. It was really, really hard work. Suddenly, they looked up, and they saw what looked like a person kind of gliding or walking on the water towards them. It was Jesus. He was walking on the water. But the disciples didn't recognize him, and they got so scared. I think I'd get so scared, too. I've never seen anybody walking on water. The disciples cried out, It's a ghost! But then Jesus called out to them, and he said, Don't be afraid. I am. I am here. Now when he called out to them, they recognized that it was Jesus. And John chapter 6, verse 21 says, Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward where they were going. Now did you catch that? The disciples were scared. They thought Jesus was a ghost coming towards them. But when they recognized him, it says they were eager. They wanted to take him into the boat. And when Jesus got in, the Bible says, immediately they reached the land where they were going. It's like we're the disciples. We're struggling. We're rowing. It's so hard. There's a big storm. But then we see Jesus, and when he comes into the boat, immediately, instantly, we get to where we need to go. All right, so hey there again, kids. Um, right now, we're in kind of a scary time, right? Have you heard about why we have to stay home? Why you can't go to school right now? Well, there's this dangerous virus going around, right? That makes people sick. And some people can get really sick. We have to protect those people so we stay home and we stay apart from people. Now, we don't know what the future holds, and it can be really hard. It can be scary, especially when we don't know when this thing is going to stop. But the very good news is that Jesus knows what the future holds. Jesus has a plan for our lives. And we know that Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us so much. And when we recognize Jesus and we let him into our hearts, when we give Jesus control of our lives, Jesus will get us where we need to go. Now, it might not be instant, like teleportation, but we can be sure that Jesus has a plan for us. And with Jesus, we will get where we need to go. All right, kids, our church loves you all, and we miss you a lot. We can't wait to see you all again. Until that time that we can meet together again, let's stay close to Jesus, and let's keep trusting that Jesus will take us where we need to be. Now, I hope you can catch our church service this weekend. Um, stay tuned for more of these videos. Um, but until we see each other again, I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay healthy. And we keep trusting in Jesus.